Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi everybody, I'm Joe Mishka from Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm at uh, Joel Baldwin's Plow Day. It's his third annual event. We're going to see a variety of equine and implements in the field. Percherons, Belgians, Suffolk Punches, Crossbreds, and even a couple miniature horses put to walking and sulky plows. We're also going to learn about a nearby Ohio State metro park called Farm Park, which is a working farm that uses horses for some of its power as it teaches the public about agriculture. We'll also learn about the National Grange system that has an important history and is still operating in rural America today. It was a little rainy the day of the event, but that didn't dampen the spirits of the participants and proved to be good working weather for the horses. Here's Joel Baldwin welcoming us. This field here is a field I've rented for 20 years. The people that own it are uh, Tom and Mary Ann Stevenson. Uh, the reason, I, this isn't at our actual farm, but this is a beautiful gravel field. I can come up here any time of the year and we can park cars and they're gracious enough to let us do it, so. The gravel lets it drain. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it could rain two inches and in a few hours you wouldn't even know it. And, and it, it works out great for this plow day event. And so this is your third? Yes, your this, third is, plow day? this is our third. Okay, why do you do this? Uh, selfish a little, cause I, I like the horses, but I, uh, yeah, like he's, he's saying I'm nuts, but a lot of people think that, but uh, I really enjoy it. I've been a, a, a draft horse enthusiast from afar for a long time. Um, finally got to the point in my life where I said, well, it's, it's, it's time to do something or not, you know? So, uh, and that's why we do it. I, I met these great people that come and, and it gets a little bit bigger every year. We've had a couple cancellations this year because I think the inclement weather and there's at least three teams that aren't gonna show up because either something came up and they couldn't, but they did let me know. Uh, but even still, you're going to have quite a few teams here. I would guess we're going to have half a dozen or eight by the time we, we get all said and done. And it's, it's just a pure fun day. Sometime during the day, uh, I thought we were going to have a few more Amish here this year with teams, but just up here, school just let out, so there's school picnics. Uh, it's kind of, a week ago there was a sale in Dover, so I want to miss that. But then I can't be too late or I have to get busy doing crops. And so do they. And so do they. So I try and squeeze it in and make it so everybody can enjoy it. Um, you farm for a living? Yes. Yeah. No crops? Yes. Now we, we're, yeah, soybeans and corns. We're 100% organic. Um, we, until a year ago, dairy farmed for the last nearly 30 years. Yeah. Talk to me about your horses. Okay, these horses here, uh, I'm sure people have seen them quite a few times on Rural Heritage. Uh, these two right here are previously Ralph Rice's. And uh, that was a, I've known, Ralph, I've known Ralph a long time. I didn't know him, know him. Uh, and I just one day stopped at his place and asked him uh, if he was interested in uh, mentoring me, you know, because I always wanted to do it. I had a fascination, but I didn't know anything about it. And of course, Ralph is a very unfriendly guy. When oh, yeah, right, right. And especially when you start talking about horses. So, uh, so he, for, for the one winter, I was over there a couple times a week, all winter long. And, uh, and I think the story's out there, but yeah, he, he at the time wanted to go a different direction with the suffix. And so we ended up with him. And that transition was made easier by you getting his horses. Oh, I'm sure. It absolutely was. He, he, was, he was worried. Um, I mean, it's hard. Yeah. Um, so he was very pleased. Right. So, and, and they're close. Right. And exactly. That's part of it. 
Uh, but he knows you too. Right. Because of that, we've become really good friends, sure. you know, and uh, so we talk all the time and he needs help. I, he helps me. I help him do whatever. So you do stuff with him on the farm, spread manure. Uh, yes, we've, we didn't have anything when we got the horses, a, right. a four okay. cart and, you know, and a tire and, and a lot of tractor equipment. Yes. I mean, that's, that's what, that's what, that's my bread and butter. I, uh, if, if I could, if, if I got to the point at some point in time, I would rather use the horses. Okay. Uh, but right now I can't do that. I've got commitments and, right, right. um, but yeah, we've, you fool around with them. yes, we, we've, we've got quite a bit plowed that we plow with them every year and, uh, spread manure with them. And, and basically everything we use them in the, the sugar bush, uh, you know, drag logs for the sugar bush and, you know, for, and basically anything I can find to do with them that, that I'm not busy doing something else. So, uh, you have this event every year. Yes. So far, and you expect it to continue. Yes. If yes. If somebody was in the area and they want to visit mm -hmm. so as a spectator, or they want to maybe bring horses, or learn how to drive horses, or any of that, how would they find out when it is for 2024? Uh, what I'm, the way I've done it the last few years, and I haven't looked that far forward, but it's I'm trying to make it the last weekend in, in uh, okay. April. Okay. which whether that falls on the 30th or 29th or 28th, uh, that depends on the year. Okay. Uh, but we're going to have it, and, and we do have it here because we can get on the ground. At the farm, it's, it could be wet. Now, some of the Amish this year, we might try and do something this fall actually at the farm. Okay. Uh, because a few of the Amish men that called that wanted to come because of commitments, they couldn't, but asked about fall. Okay. So we're kind of kicking it around sometime mid to late September. All right. Uh, and, uh, and well, you know, this is going to be the main one that might be, you know, and it just depends. I've got, I've got a lot of older equipment. We've got, we still have a, a Husker shredder. I don't have a corn binder. We sold that to some Amish here 10 years ago. And had I known, <laughs> I'd have kept it. Uh, but kind of thinking by that time, we might be able to have a little bit more than just plowing sure. right right you know yeah. have more of a harvest festival right demonstrate other stuff right yeah. right uh as far as this event this is really all i really want this to be plow day. Uh, yeah right. I, I don't want to i don't want to turn it into a circus no of course uh, not uh, yeah it's a plow day right i i don't you know i don't which is uh, what teamsters enjoy doing the most right of anything right now Disking we, a little bit but yeah plowing. i brought a disc I and I, I disked last year and and i think as this thing goes and more and more people you know, are going to hear about it and you get a few Amish to come this year and they'll be like, oh, hey, we had a good time and yeah. maybe they'll come up next year, you know, Great. so everybody that comes has come back. Yeah. Okay. That's so, a good sign. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and hopefully this year we've had some new inquiries, uh, whether they actually show up or just, you know, kicking tires, who knows? So, okay. yeah. uh, but, uh, I do it. I enjoy it. I enjoy the people. Um, it's just, like I said, kind of a selfish, not, not too many, uh, this doesn't happen around here a lot. There's, there's teams around that, uh, show horses, go to, you know, have hitches and go to fairs and stuff. And, and we actually are going to participate in a little bit of that this year. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm more about the, the farm work end of it, you know? Uh, and I don't know, I, I guess, uh, it's just. It's always been a, always been a, a aspiration to, to do something like this and we're finally able to do it. We now have four volumes of America's Rural Yesterday books with photos of farm life a hundred years ago. Fieldwork has images of horses in the fields working the ground, planting and harvesting the crop. Barn and Farmyard shows farmers putting that crop in the barn, silo or corn crib and caring for poultry, hogs, cattle and more. In At Home and in Town, farm families prepare Sunday dinner, relax in the parlor, drive to town by buggy or wagon and visit the general store. Finally, Early Tractors has over 250 photos of early American tractors like Alice Chalmers, Oliver, John Deere, Farmall, Minneapolis Moline, and many more. These photos are of new tractors 
computers back in the day and show how they were configured coming out of the factory. Buy any of these books for $24.95 plus shipping. When you buy two or more, the price per book goes down, all the way to $17.49 per book when you buy all four. To order, just call 1-877-647-2452 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. That's 877-647-2452. Well, East Plymouth Grange was founded in 1901 by some of our ancestors. That is an organization that was started for farmers, for social activities, also for legislative purposes to help against the railroads when they came through farmers' fields. Um, and they also did some community service work. Now we still do legislation, community service work. Um, that's part of why we're here today. Mr. Baldwin asked if we would serve refreshments for his plow days. We meet the second and fourth Tuesday at seven o'clock at our hall at 1199 Carson Road. Um, we have um, written letters to the state Grange, which passes it on to the state Senate and legislators. Um, and we also have done legislation for the county um, to improve some road intersections. Uh, we have done dictionaries for third graders as part of our community service and donations to other organizations. The building was built in 1915 by the members. Uh, my great grandparents were involved in that and they drew the logs out from lumber mills on horses and bobsleds. They are um, 34 inches tall. They're both mares. I use them in a lot of parades and children's events. And I brought them here today, so if there's little kids, they can come up and pet them. Where the big horses, they probably can't. So last year we came and watched and we said, we are gonna participate next year. So we found an old plow and restored it. And this is our first attempt at trying it. Okay, all right. Are you having fun? Oh, yes, we're having a great time. Good, good. Do you just have the two? Do you have more? No, uh, I have uh, 17 minis. I have really? three more with me today, and I'm going to try a four-horse hitch. Are you? Okay, all right. Uh, so do you breed them? Yes. Okay, all right. What other kinds of things do you do with them besides parades? Um, we do a lot of photo opportunities where we go to, like, fairy festivals, and they dress up like unicorns, and um, we have one next weekend. And the little kids can come stand next to them, get their pictures taken, that kind of thing. So you're kind of ambassadors for children yes. with horses. Yeah, we have a good time. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Cool. So this is our first attempt at actually working hard. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Because um, they're up to the task. Oh, yes. We have um, a lot of horse-drawn vehicles. We have a Cinderella pumpkin coach, a stagecoach. During the COVID lockdown, we built a hearse. Okay. We have calliopes. I just bought a circus wagon that was built in 1950, and then we restore things. You have a, a calliope that you pull? Yes. Oh, really? Yeah, and it plays. My goodness. It's run by an air blower in the back with a keyboard. <laughs> so it's all hand-built. Do you parade with that? Yes. Awesome. Boy, that's, that's terrific. That's one of my most fun ones to take. <laughs> Pound for pound, minis are probably among the most powerful animals on oh, earth, yes. I think. They can't carry a whole lot, like uh, as far as riding, maybe, on their backs. maybe 50 pounds. I can do little children's birthday parties, but they're way stronger pulling. And they're modular. You can hook up a bunch of them. Yes. As many as you need, yes. and then you can, I mean, they're awfully handy size. Yes, and they ride in our van. You know, if I'm just taking one or two to a parade, they just hop in the back of the van and go with us. Very cool. <laughs> Easy to harness. Yes. Although you have to get down low to some. But there's not, you're not putting anything over your head. Right. And it's half the weight. Yeah. And they're. They'd be. I think we're going to try plowing our garden this year with them. Okay. And see. We we bought the smallest plow that we could find, and restored it. It was like a rambling wreck, and we found the parts that were missing and built new handles and. So is this a, is this is a pony plow? Yes. Uh huh. It's, it's a 10 inch, okay. where these other ones are, are way bigger. Right, right. And then the wheel depth shows how deep you can go. Right. So we just wanted to come and participate, so we're not uh, doing any actual deep plowing. We're just... You are making a pretty straight line, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, for our first attempt. Very straight. And it's harder to, to do than you think. It's like driving cats. They're well, just kind of wandering. Right, and you're actually making the furrow as opposed to pushing over a yes. wall. So yes. you're it's harder. Yes. Um, it, it, but um, we have it set real shallow, so it's easier for them to pull. It's kind of scratching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, that's great. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. Hello, and thank you for watching Rural Heritage today. If you've enjoyed seeing horses work in the field, please consider visiting the American Vermont Association's Fall Rendezvous October 6th and 7th in Bellington, West Virginia. You'll see American Vermont horses logging, field demonstrations, plowing, loose hay, and a precision driving contest. So please give us your consideration if you'd like to visit us this fall, or to learn more, visit theamericanvermontassociation.net or look for us on Facebook. Thank you. Where are you from? Lake Metro Parks. Okay, all right. That's a, um, a living history farm? That's a... It is an educational farm. Okay, all right. Um, and whereabouts is that? It's located in Kirtland, Ohio. Okay. Um, and have you been to this event before? This would Joel's? be the third or fourth year we've been here. Okay, so I think he's done it three years, so you've yep. been every time. Yep, every okay. time he's been here, we've been here to have it. All right, okay. What do you do with the horses on the farm? So the typical day for the, the typical day on the job for the farm is they're, they're working on the wagon from 10 to 2, um, giving rides around the park. We do some field work with them. We've done some grain harvesting, um, corn binding, but their main job is just pulling the wagon around, giving rides. Sure. And what is the mission of the farm? Is to educate people where the food and fiber come from. Okay. And so it's not a... Um... It's not, it's not trying to talk about our legacy or our ancestors, no. but it's talking about today's agriculture. Yeah, today's agriculture and like how you would utilize different animals on a farm where grains and food different com food comes from and how horses and stuff help, help every day still and what they benefit. Okay, and so what's a typical customer if there's such a thing, or a visitor? Um, it's kind of a wide range. We can have anywhere from people in, that bring their kids in strollers to people that used to farm that come up just to reminisce and see what see what was going on and what we we're doing school field trips yeah we have about 400 kids every day through may and april and may really yeah wow so it's it's a busy time of year this time yeah you probably have gotten really good at uh working with kids yeah yeah because some of them have better chaperones than others that is that is very true Tell me about the horses. Um, so this team here we have is Brutus and Jax. They are eight and nine year old Belgian draft horses. Um, they came off an Amish farm in Indiana and we purchased them. Okay, all right. And uh, you're, um, you're on a sulky plow. It's a pioneer yep. footlift? Yeah, no, uh -huh. yeah, footlift. Yeah, yeah, and it's working good for you. Yeah, yeah, it was a little tricky getting started just because different yeah, soil. Because you're getting started, using. Yeah. right, but yeah, of course. So far it's been going pretty good. Good, all right. And, um, and you don't talk. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I specialize with the light horses more okay, so. Okay, saddle I horses. I drive the draft horses, too. I just, he's just done this so much yeah. more. Sure, sure. This is more his specialty. I understand. Yeah. So you work with the saddle horses, then? Yeah, or I'm carriage? I'm the equine manager at the farm park. And okay. so I do do a lot of talking, <laughs> yeah. but not about this particular topic. Yeah. Understood. I'm going to put the best person with the strength. <laughs> Understood. He's actually helping me because I've been out maybe four times doing this. Probably. Okay. This is like maybe my fifth time. So, um, I mean, I've even helped with the walking plow, which I find very difficult, helping public to do that. Trying yeah, because we, <laughs> plow, we plow with kids in public, too. Yes. Sure. So. That's terrific. They enjoy that. Yeah, they really do. So you're driving the horses. They're, they're handling the plow, learning yep. that it goes backwards. Yep, pretty and much. It goes the opposite of what they expect. Yep. Yeah. Have you noticed... And this can be off the record, but have you noticed that girls do a better job than boys? Yes. Yeah, me too. I, I've, I haven't noticed it with working with horses too. Yeah. Women do a better job. Like we, had older older men want to try to overpower them, and it just it doesn't. You can't do it. It's finesse. Yes. It's you, you gotta have, be smarter than the plow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I would agree with that. I might use that on the record because I mean I think that's yeah. so accurate. Yeah. 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 I told people that. I mean. Okay. It's just one of those things. It's. It's the truth. Right. It is what it is. Yeah. We're very specific. Yeah. It's a really nice team. Thank you. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, do you work with the walking plow back at the farm much yourself? 
This is kind of one of the first times you've done it? Uh, first time in probably about four or five years. No kidding. You're doing a good job. Thank you. You don't like walking in the furrow? No. You like walking on the land? A little bit easier. Yeah, right, right. Um, not everybody can do that. Um, it's kind of a luxury. Um, and your, uh, your land side horse wants to get into the furrow now and then, it seems like, which is kind of rare. Usually it's the other way around. Usually it's a furrow horse tries to get out. Or are you getting both? Steering's a, so my problem that I'm having right now is I'm watching the plow, right, and then not watching the horses. Mm -hmm. So then they get squirrely. So then I pay attention to the horses. Plow yeah. gets squirrely. <laughs> right, so, right. Yeah, it's a lot to keep track of. A lot of multitasking. Right, right. Yeah. Whereas on a sulky, uh, you mostly just have to steer the horses once you get the plow set. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. Nice day today. I'm could be worse. Right. Could be could pouring be rain. Right. Could be, could be snow. Be snow. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. 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 What else can you tell me about the park? What? Uh, how long has it been? Uh, over thirty years. Okay. That we've been there. Okay. Um, it used to be an Arabian horse farm, and it's turned into the farm park. We have sheep and goats, um, pigs, cows. We do milking demonstrations, um, the horse demonstrations. The horses pull a people mover wagon to transport people during the day. Um, right now there's baby animals, so that's very cute. And we try to keep um, a calf all year. Um, sometimes that doesn't work out. Sure. But people love the babies. Right. And then baby pigs. Is it um, connected with the state? Is it a completely private nonprofit? Uh, what, is, what is it? It's a state. Oh, okay. It's a, the Lake Metro Parks. Okay. All right. And the farm park is part of that. There's and your mission is to educate the public on farming? Yes. We have a lot of school groups that come out um, talking about the different animals. Um, some of the kids, even adults, ask if the horses are real that are pulling the wagon. and So they've never seen any animals up close. So these are suburban and urban kids that you're talking about um, mostly? Both. Yeah. yeah. The ones that ask those kind of questions. Um, have never seen a farm or an animal that lives on a farm. So you're really teaching those kids fundamental information about where their food comes from. Right, where milk comes from, where their meat comes from. Vegetables, grain, yep. We have a, a fiber. big plant, uh, plant science center, has a big greenhouse, and then a hydroponics area also. No kidding. So grow some vegetables hydroponically. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.